Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter four talking about performance testing task, continuing ahead with 4.2 analysis, design and implementation. As a part of this tutorial, there are a lot of things to be discussed. So breaking this down and moving into the next part of it, that is 4.2.7, implementing the performance test script. Well, in our previous tutorials, we have covered a lot about analysis and the design part of the performance test and in fact understood in the previous tutorial that how to basically create your script which you'll be using for performance testing. Now it's time we should understand a little more about implementing these performance test scripts. Now performance test scripts are implemented based on the PTP which stands for performance test plan and the load profiles. While technical details of implementation will differ depending on the approaches and the tools used, the overall process remains the same. A performance script is created using an integrated development environment or script editor to simulate a user or component behavior. Now this is basically understood from the previous tutorial itself that when it comes to creation of the script, there are certain things which you need to take into account and we generally consider all the preparation of the script including whatsoever you need including the part of the script in terms of data driving it the set of test data which you need the kind of response you want to capture or kind of a specialized steps like to compare and check certain values and make sure that they do pop up when you generally execute them so a lot of things will be taken into account and the same thing will be further implemented as a part of the type of tool which you use as the sequence of requests is determined the script may be recorded or programmed depending on the approach. Recording usually ensures that it exactly simulates the real system while programming relies on the knowledge of the proper request sequence. Now here we are trying to highlight you that there are both the ways to prepare the script and implement it. That is either by recording or you can also write it yourself. The only difference between these two approaches is that when you record, you actually interact with the application and perform the way a user will work on the system. On the other hand, when it comes to programming, you may expect some human errors or could be tedious enough to define that what would be the sequence of activities or actions being performed. If recorded on the protocol level is used, uh, an essential step after recording in most cases is replacing all the recorded internal identifiers that define context. These identifiers must be made into variable that can be changed between runs with appropriate values that are extracted from the request responses. Of course, we do make use of protocols in terms of recording it, which tells the environment that this is what I'm trying to interact with, this is what my application is all about, and I'll be taking into these things as account to define the overall a scenario. So you need to take care of all the steps which are required in order to perform this and definitely identify all the variables that can change between the runs and define the necessary test data required to do this job. Running multiple virtual users with the same username and accessing the same uh, test a set of data as usually happens during the playback of a recording script without any further modification beyond necessary correlation is an easy way to get misleading results. The data could be completely cached, copied from a disk to memory for faster access and result would be much better than in production. So one thing again we need to take into account that if we are recording certain things it's generally a practice that you replay the recorded script. Of course, the data has been cached in the memory and does return you faster outcomes. But when you try modifying the data, you'd see a different behavior because this data was not available in the cache before you could execute. So you need to take care of such things and understand that whatever you're trying to record, if you play that back, do not rely on that assumption that yes, the response time meets the expectation. It's just to confirm that if and every single activity is performed as expected. Otherwise, it may definitely give you a better result compared to the ordinary one. Running multiple users, uh, okay, there are cases where some data must be parameterized for the test to work more than once. For example, when an order is created and the other, uh, the order name must be unique. 
Unless the order's name is parameterized, the test will fail as soon as it tries to create an order with the existing recorded name. Now, another important thing to take into account is that generally the order names or order numbers or PNR of a flight are unique to every passenger or every particular booking. Now, if you have recorded and at the end there was a data which is generated, of course, if you try to read on the same thing, it would generate the same uh, outcome and probably look for that particular window which you created the last time. Now that may not be available at this time because the next iteration will create a new order number and or new order name that would definitely conflict. So we need to take into these accounts by doing the parameterization and passing on the values. And during the parameterization also, if there are any dynamic set of data which appears on the screen, you need to make sure that these things are going to be using regular expression to handle those dynamic set of data which will definitely help you to avoid any kind of exceptions during the runtime. To match operational profiles, think time should be inserted or adjusted to generate proper number of requests and throughput, which basically helps us to determine that uh, the think time basically replicates the user behavior while interacting with the system. If required, you can actually include your think time or multiply or increase the think time based on what you are actually expecting in order to that system to do for you. So we don't want to miss out the real-time interface of a user even if you're trying to automate using a tool and having a virtual set of user. But yeah, just want to make sure that everything fits the purpose at the end of the day. Well, that was a small thing talking about how to implement performance test scripts. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.